Hey, welcome to Hooper's Radar. Today, I'll be discussing how the Miami Heat completely decided to bet on the further development and improvement of their returning players, and as a result of this decision, wasted their offseason and made no major moves. The Heat have been a pretty competitive playoff team in recent history. Matter of fact, since acquiring Jimmy Butler and what has only been three years of having Jimmy, the Heat have already made the NBA Finals, the Conference Finals, and in what was an unfortunate year in the 2020-21 season, they were a first round sweep to the Bucks. To begin, the first season they had Jimmy, which was the 2019-20, the bubble season, they ended up making the NBA Finals as a fifth seed in the East. We're talking about a team that prior to the Jimmy Butler trade in the 2018-19 season was a 10th seed. They didn't even make the playoffs or were even close to making the playoffs. And the season they acquired Jimmy in the bubble season, they ended up making the playoffs as a fifth seed and end up making the NBA Finals and was a great deep playoff run. They end up playing the Lakers in the finals, losing six games. And arguably, the Heat, the Heat could have maybe won that series and could have definitely changed things up had Goran Dragic and Bam not gotten injured throughout that series. But that's a discussion for another day. And let's just give our credit that the Heat had a great run. And they surprised a lot of us in what was their first season making the playoffs in a while. And their first season with Jimmy Butler, that was just a great season. The season next was such a downgrade year. The Heat picked up a lot of heat and steam off of getting the NBA Finals run. And the Heat just completely collapsed and cooled down as a team. The perception of the Heat was that they were pretenders in the second year because they ended up getting swept by the Bucks in four games. The Heat didn't look like the same team the prior year and it was just such a downgrade and collapse year for the heat the heat would end up bouncing back this last season the 2021-22 season where they would end up beating the hawks in the first round beating the 76ers and making the nba eastern conference finals against the celtics now we all knew jimmy butler had a big offensive load that he had to carry and we saw that a lot throughout this celtic series especially it went seven games and was a great series, but the Heat would end up losing just by a little bit because the load for Jimmy offensively, especially to close close out games, was too large. We all saw it at the end, those last couple minutes. Jimmy took that three and missed it. He was so gassed. And the Celtics defense, the Celtics defense was doing a lot of things to that Heat team. But it was just a great se series overall. And it shows that in these last three years since the Heat have gotten competitive with getting Jimmy, they haven't really made any major moves at all. The biggest move they've made is getting Kyle Lowry, and that says a lot. That basically says, if you can see the whole roster of this Miami Heat team being Bam, Tyler Hero, Max Struess, everybody besides Jimmy and Kyle Lowry has been drafted talent and talent that the Heat themselves have developed. So that says a lot to how this team has built itself up. Victor Oladipo is probably the biggest signing for the Heat after Kyle Lowry, but that's not saying a lot because when the Heat signed Victor Oladipo, they signed him after he was injured, and he hasn't been the same Victor Oladipo, and it's not like the Miami Heat got prime Victor Oladipo from the Pacers when they signed him, so, but Victor Oladipo definitely has played a great role for this team, and I think he's going to have a lot of big things coming this next season, so that's Vic, and then the Heat have always had a great eye for recruiting lower talent and bringing it up. Like guys like Duncan Robinson, Max Struess, Omer Yurtsevin, and even a solid pickup which didn't come from lower talent. Dwayne Dedman has been a solid backup big for them. But guys like Duncan Robinson and Omer Yurtsevin have definitely been G League talent that they brought up, and those guys have played major roles for this team. Duncan Robinson is a sniper. Although he kind of regressed last year, I'm not going to lie, he still is a sniper, and I think he's going to have a bounce back here. And then a great backup big like Omer Yurtsevin that is just great at rebounds and can play solid inside defense. You know, it's things like that that make this Heat franchise such a great franchise. They have such a great eye for scouting talent and not doing major trades for talent, but more like bringing up lower talent that might have been D3 players, G League players, and bringing them up and just developing them, developing them into NBA talents. Tyler Hero and Bam Adebayo have also been great representations that this Heat franchise has a great eye and vision for drafting talent. Tyler Hero is already a proven 20 point per game scorer and this last season's six man of the year. Bam Adebayo is a defensive player of the year candidate and has been an all-star center for this Miami Heat team. This proves that the Heat definitely have a great eye for recruiting talent and hopefully Nikola Jovic 
their previous draft pick this last draft ends up being another example of the Heat having great eye for talent. And hopefully Nikola Jovic develops into that floor stretching type of center or power forward wherever the Heat intend to put him at and end up meeting the expectations of all the prospects that the Heat usually draft. To get into the offseason swing of things, I know the Miami Heat are mainly betting on Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero to take that next step as star players and bring up their stats statistically and be better offensively and defensively this next season, especially when they let go of such an important player like PJ Tucker in the offseason and just let him walk and sign with the 76ers. We're talking about a guy who started at the power four position for the Heat last year and was an absolute bulldog on defense during the regular season and even stepped it up more in the playoffs guarding the other team's opposing best player. So PJ Tucker was definitely a big loss for this team. And it's crazy how after losing PJ Tucker, they also lost Markeith Morris, who was also a pretty solid player. Obviously not as big of a role as PJ Tucker, but PJ Tucker was a pretty big loss for them. And they also lost Michael Mulder and Javante Smart, but those weren't really that big or major players that they lost. But it's crazy because the Heat really added nobody. You know, if I was to tell you all these guys that the Heat added, they basically signed like six undrafted players. The most major player they really picked up this offseason was their draft pick, Nikola Jovic. And that's basically a rookie, you know. So they didn't really sign any proven guys that are solid or role players. They basically signed a, a bunch of undrafted players and drafted Nikola Jovic. And they re-signed Dwayne Dedman, Udonis Haslam, Caleb Martin, and Victor Oladipo. So this team didn't really have much of an offseason. You know, they didn't do any crazy moves. They basically re-signed some of their guys that are proven and solid for them and fit the system. They signed a bunch of guys I guess they're betting on to do something for this team and six undrafted players. And they signed Nikola Jovic, who they're hoping will come out as a great rookie for them and play a good role for this team. And they just let go of Markeith Morris and P.J. Tucker. You know, Markeith doesn't hurt for me as much, but P.J. Tucker, you know, every team wants a P.J. Tucker on their team. A bulldog who will give their absolute energy and everything on defense and a guy who's proven it in the playoffs. He's, he's such an impact player. For the most part, the Heat are expecting Tyler Hero to take a leap as a player defensively because Tyler Hero is a defensive liability and has been exposed at times on the defensive side of the ball. Tyler Hero is already a proven offensive player being a 6 man of the year and 20 point per game score, so that isn't really the weak side of his game, it's more the defensive things and I believe Tyler Hero will improve defensively and hopefully we'll see that this upcoming season. Bam's leap as a player definitely needs to come on the offensive side. As we've already seen, Bam is a proven defensive player, being a defensive player of the year candidate, an all-star center for this team, and just being a great overall defender as we've seen in the games. Bam has always shown glimpses of being a great offensive player, but we've just never gotten the full piece of things. And glimpses like the 30 point game in the conference finals against the Celtics are things that make NBA fans go crazy about Bam's potential. This is a guy that if he gets more aggressive and assertive and more confident and works on those type of things, he could definitely be an amazing two-way player. But until then, and until we really get to see the full side of how great of a offensive player Bam can be, he still definitely does need to work on being more aggressive as an offensive player, but he still remains one of the most elite defenders in the league. For Duncan Robinson, all Duncan really needs to do is have a solid bounce back here where he averages 12 to 13 points per game, shooting about 39 to 40% from three, and just be a playable defender. He hasn't always been the greatest defender and he could always improve in that area of his game, but that's all Duncan really needs to do to have a bounce back year and just be what he was signed 20 million a year to do, which is be a great floor stretcher and just shoot good from three. Max Struess is another guy I definitely believe will take a leap this season. I mean, he's already proven he's a pretty good scorer, capable defender, and just solid scorer who knows his role in this system. This last season, in 68 games played, which most of them he came off the bench, he averaged 10.6 points, 1.4 assists, 3 rebounds, shooting 41% from 3 on 6.5 attempts. That's pretty good for a player who comes off the bench and just knows his role in the system. So I definitely think that Max Struess will improve this season and take another leap, whether it's offensively or defensively. I think Max Struess's numbers offensively should go up to about 13, 14 points, and that would definitely be a nice little leap for him. 
as a result of this offseason, the Heat are most definitely betting that Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, Duncan Robinson, and Max Strews are going to take major leaps as players. So that wraps up my Heat video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe to stay on the radar for all things basketball.